Okay, welcome back, Uncut with Jay Cutler. Uh, we are on week three. We've got another show. Today will be Josh McCown. I played with Josh in Chicago for a numerous uh, amount of years. Phenomenal human being. Played on 97 different teams for 26 years. He's been everywhere. He's a, he's a father. He's a, actually a grandfather now. His old, eldest daughter just had a, had, a, had a baby. He's one of those people that you just enjoy being around. He, he's, he brings you up. He's got great advice. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a great locker room guy. He's a great leader. And I, I'm excited to have him on because he's, he's, uh, he helped me through some, some, some times in my life. And he's always been there for me. And he's been supportive. And, 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 and I owe him a, a, a lot. So excited to, to have him on. Uh, if there's something on the show you don't like, if there's something you like, go on Apple, give us a rating, leave a comment. We're happy to, uh, to look through them and see exactly what you guys listening and, and, and watching want to hear. Because uh, this is a uh, this is an experience for you, and we want to make sure that it's right. So, with that, let's get Josh on. Uh, excited for this one. Uh, hopefully, uh, it, it's a it's a good one. All right, welcome uh, to the show, Josh McCown. I don't really know how to describe you. Really, where to start? <laughs> Obviously, a lot in of a, layers uh, here. there's a ton of layers. It's like a it's like a it's like a giant onion. Obviously, NFL quarterback. I mean, I'll just go down the. I'll, I'll just go down a quick list. Arizona, uh, Lions, and you also played receiver there. Trade to the Raiders, Dolphins. Trade to Carolina, Hartford, San Francisco, Bears, Tampa Bay. Big deal in Tampa oh, yeah. Bay. Browns, Jets, Phillies. Or sorry, not Phillies. Philadelphia, and you also coached high school ball while at Philly, correct? That's right. Texans interviewed for head coach. <laughs> oldest, pra oldest practice squad player in the history of NFL. I mean, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. It's a whole it's a whole bunch of things that list that nobody wants to be on. Really, I think. Yeah, I know, but it's a pretty phenomenal list. I mean, it's I think it speaks a lot of your character and, and who you are. And I mean, I would I would say that there's <clears throat> so many people out there that probably would have been like this. This is enough stops. Like I'm done here. <laughs> like. Yeah. Are we, are we going to sure. keep going? But, I mean, you grew yeah. up in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're here. We're here. Uh, finished last year with Houston. Yep. Uh, we, we moved when, when uh, COVID shut everything down um, sports-wise in North Carolina. And, and uh, you know, we wanted to get closer to home, mm -hmm. be around family. Yeah. And because uh, we didn't we know if we'd be playing again or whatever. So we have a place on a lake here. So it just makes sense to be here. You know, do some you know, thing and football opened up here in Texas. They weren't slowing down really. So yeah, chance for the boards to play and all that stuff. So it was fun for them. Um, so it's been good. It's been a good move for us. So are you coaching now? Yes. Yeah. I'm the wide receivers coach of the high school team. So what's the, tell um, me what, what offense are we running? Tell me what offense we're running. <clears throat> which, which, well, it's like which, a, it's a, it's a West coast hybrid. Okay. Know? Give it, um, give it to, give me a, yeah. give me a, give me a play, give me a play call. Give you a play call, okay? Yeah. Um, all right, I mean, you'll, you'll like this. Okay. Uh, you know, it'll be like um, doubles, zoom, 61, L burst, Z snag. L, uh, who's L? Okay. Is that L? Uh, L is our, is what is we it, are X, as that, you know it. All okay. right, we, we keep okay. it simple in high school. We, we L and R, so, and those guys line up on the same sides. Okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. really, your slots are really the only guys that got in understand how to move gotcha um 61 so, protection yeah 61 is a protection burst is a circus as we know it okay and then snag as you yeah, know it no snag yeah um so, i mean you've been in a lot of systems i was <laughs> i was in yeah. a lot of systems you were in a lot of systems yeah we got a lot of ball between us we really do i, I mean yeah. but i think i've forgotten a lot of ball though too yeah i mean i don't i don't oh, remember well, i don't yeah. I mean, I, you don't, you just don't remember all the little nuances and like, you know, you call it snag or you call it, you call it circus. Now you call it burst. I mean, there's just, you know, there's 46 different ways to call everything, but I mean, certain, no cer well, certain I mean, systems stick stuck with me though. I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I think too, like it's funny, you, you forget a lot of ball like what you're saying, but then like the minute somebody brings up a play and starts sure. talking about something, yeah. you go down a rabbit hole and you're like, Oh, this is that play, and this is that play, and you start remembering the games that you called them in, the, you mm -hmm. know, the, how you threw the ball, yeah. all of those things. Um, I think like you, uh, and we're seeing it right now in the league, uh, Mike's system, Kyle, yep. like the way they do it, I mean, it's a, it's a good system. And, uh, oh, yeah. and, you know, I got a version of it a little bit there with Bates in Chicago with you, and then, yep. and then again with him in, in New York. And, uh, and it's it's one that I enjoy. I think it's the way that you you you, you can you know move the football most efficiently um, with with various personnel. But it's a uh, it's so so we kind of have some of those principles as as we're you know running zone zone schemes up front and and uh, stuff like that. So people are you know it's fun to talk to these high school coaches just about the evolution of it when you you know when you're as old as we are and you've had the history of the system. People start talking about you know air raid and RPOs and all that, and it's like well. That was the same thing way back when. It was just yeah. called a keeper. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We, yeah. they were reading the end. The play yeah. caller was just doing it for you. He was just yeah. keeping it. And you're getting on the end. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to talk ball with these guys and, and uh, to hear their thoughts and then, and then what it does for your brain, remembering, you know, all these systems and plays. I mean, I don't, I don't remember who did the RPOs first. I mean, I remember my second year in the league, which was 07, that we were doing, like, you know, the bubble, all the bubble rage and all that stuff started kind of coming into play and cover two and you know we were running we were running away from it we were running into it and if that nickel got a little too tight we were we were doing the bubble stuff so i don't know but i don't know who started that or if anyone was doing that before i'm sure someone probably was i guess probably i guess peyton yeah, I mean, was peyton, yeah, with, yeah, with peyton in the coach somebody off in the dark corner somewhere that's like man we were doing that but, exactly but what? i think also though people take it and do it better and do it well you yeah. know and i do think the Broncos were at the forefront of doing that well and mm -hmm. making that popular in the NFL for sure. Yeah, and then you know, then the the, the bubble with the slant behind it started happening, and yeah, and and all that stuff. So, and then you know, you fake away and you're doing double slant. So it was a it was it was a fun time in the league, and and defenses were so much easier then. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, you, I mean, you guys, and I mean, that's I think from your when you came in and, and they kept growing it and then they go to Washington and they get RG and they do some of the stuff with him and he's yep. rookie of the year, but because they were now taking from the shotgun, the zone read stuff and, and uh, creating mismatches with his speed and then creating voids in the defense where he could throw to, which, you know, caused him to have a great, great first year. So um, it's cool to see how people take it and, and expand on it. And with the guys coming in the league now, especially the way, guys can move um you know the the possibilities are endless with the way these offenses are going do i mean do you think that the offenses can keep keep the spread and, and the quarterbacks running around and stuff and keep them healthy i mean i guess with the new rules and everything it, it's it's probably viable yeah dude but here's the thing I, i'm gonna keep saying this because that 43 44 45 year old sucker down in tampa keeps winning championships it's true so physics the fastest way to move the football is to throw it from A to B. Yes. That's always going to be accurately. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. that's, that's just science. That ain't, you know. So I think we'll always have to win from the pocket. There'll yeah. always be a premium on throwing the ball accurately from the pocket. Yes. But as these guys keep coming into the league more pocket ready because they played seven on sevens and they're seeing so much more football than you and I ever saw. Yes. They're going to be better from the pocket, but then they're also going to be athletic and be able to make move, you know throws outside the mm -hmm. pocket, do the things that. You were doing forever in your career, which is, you know, the the, the cool quarterback talk of throwing off the platform and all that, mm -hmm. all that jazz. But it's like, you know, um, we're getting these guys that it's a practiced habit. You know, so yeah. much for you and I coming through the league was like trying to play on rhythm, play on rhythm. And yeah. people were like, let's get Jay Cutler to play on rhythm. And it's yeah. like, well, I think people are seeing Pat and some of these guys come in the league and go, well, he can make the throw without having to have his feet yeah. up there. Yeah. So, like, we can keep fighting this or we can just let him make the throw until sure. it gets us in trouble and it's not gotten Pat in trouble yet. So, yep. I think that's really the thing is there will always be a premium on throwing from the pocket and being yeah. accurate. There will always, always, always be that. Without a doubt. Um, but this ability to move with these guys just allows you to do more things and uh, be more creative from a route standpoint. And, I mean, to your point, I mean, defenses aren't getting slower. I mean, no. these, these guys are flying around the ball. So... 
it, it, you get to a point when you get in the playoffs or you, you, you go against a really good team that, you know, these defenses are, are highly disciplined, extremely fast, in the right place at all times. So you're, the only way to beat them is to, you know, surgically pick them apart throwing the football. And if you can't no doubt. do and and I think you, that's good. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you, you're like, as you see uh, Baltimore's offense grow and evolve, yeah, I think you're going to see Lamar in the pocket a lot more because because at the end of the day, second, third round of the playoffs for them to get where they want to go, yeah, he's going to have to stand back there and throw because the defenses are too fast and those third round uh, defenses they're going to understand their assignment and, and so when you're just just saying okay quarterback read something and run yeah. I just think that's really hard on him to say, hey, carry our team by just running. The, and, and he's an elite runner. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but I think for his career, like in his evolution, if you let him play back there, because I think he can too. I think that's the biggest misconception is we can generate offense with his feet and that's fine. But we're robbing Peter to pay Paul for years six, seven, and eight of his career when he yeah. needs to stand back there and throw the ball. Yeah. And now in, in years two, three, and four, we, we lost those reps because we were generating offense surprising the league by running around and letting him do his thing. Whereas like, man, let's let him sit back there. Cause he really can't spin the ball. I, I saw a few shots on the other day on the preseason game. And I was like, man, let that dude sit back there. And you know, as well as I do, the best runs for a quarterback are the scrambles. Like, yeah. you know, the quarterback driven runs are cool, but like when I got, when everything's out of there, cause he can throw from the pocket and then he takes off. It's the same thing with Michael Vick. Like mm -hmm. those are electrifying runs. So yep. I think Baltimore's next step will happen whenever, that dude plays from the pocket. They let him play from the pocket because I think he can. And uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. He'll be, he'll be hard to stop. Well, he'll be really hard to stop. And, and that's the fine line of, of, of saying, all right, like, you know, I'm going to take my drop. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit here. And then it's like, all right, when do I go? When do I take off? And, and he's not going to figure that out until they put him in that position more and say, hey, we need you to throw exactly. the ball. Throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And you'll figure out, all right, from coverages, from just, you know, it doesn't look right. It's, 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 it's hazy. And, and then you go. And then that's what, whenever he'll be ripping off, you know, 40, 50, 60 yard runs. No doubt. No doubt. And you got to give him those reps now. Like you can't, you know, you can't wait till it's late in his career. And now he doesn't run so good. And then you say, Hey man, let's play from the pocket more. And it's like, well, kind of past that, 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 that ship sailed, you know, in the early years when you should have been giving him those kind of reps and letting him learn. So you get, um, yeah, you get called tomorrow. You going back? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, you I'm still, too you entrenched, man. One boy's, one boy's a senior, one boy's a junior. Yeah. Um, you know, now when this high school season ends, I can't say, you know, I don't, <laughs> that may be a different answer. Oh my goodness. You are it just depends, you're you know? unbelievable. It just depends. I mean, you're going to need a bigger, but, you're going to need a bigger wall. Yeah, I know. I know. We got, I mean, we got it going. I got a couple of spaces here that we need to, we got jerseys that we need to hang yeah. up. Yeah. We don't. We don't have enough space. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's done. I'm, I'm having a blast coaching. I really am. And, and with your kids, you know, with my kids being out there and watching my sons play, it's, it's pretty fun. So, so your, your oldest is going to Colorado still? That's right. I'm going to go play for KD. That's awesome. Was what? Yeah. How, how was the recruiting process different from it's, – it's completely night and day now, right? Yeah, because it's just, you know – like this whole thing, you and I get go through it and we get, we got letters and we got a coach oh, yeah. calling us and yeah. then you visit and you sit down with the head coach on the visit. And yep. They look you in the eye and they say, we're going to offer you a scholarship. Mm -hmm. and it's like this big moment. But oh, now it's like, it's like they, it's like, you know, the, the process doesn't start until they say we're offering you. And then oh, they start really? Recruiting. Really? Yeah. So it's completely backwards. So, huh. um, so that was new to us, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, he starts getting offers from different people and you're like, oh, that's cool. Cause he, in your mind, you're like, well, that is that, you know, is that real or is it just now they're recruiting you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, Colorado really, you know, they offered and they really started recruiting him hard. And, and you know, you've been around Carl Durrell. Yep. Uh, I had a chance to be around him a couple of times throughout my career and just a high character dude, you yeah. know, good, good man. And, and was, was funny. We had a kid, uh, locally, um, that, that played at one of the other high schools that's playing for them brought home their playbook and it's, it's the stuff that you and I know. Yeah. And it's the stuff that Owen has grown up watching. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pro stuff. And, and, uh, and he's like, man, dad, that's like y'all's playbook. And I'm like, man, yeah, it is it's, it's very similar. So that was another, from a football standpoint, from a character standpoint with Carl, it was just a good fit. And, uh, and 
the other part of the game is, you, you know, they kind of offer a ton of guys, and, mm-hmm. they, and they're taking a quarterback. Yes. And it's not really like – I mean, I think there's guys that they like, don't get me wrong, but I think there's like – they're casting a wide net, and they're going, we're taking one or two this year, period. And once we get those guys committed, we're kind we're of done. out on everybody else. So they kind of force so your hand. So that started happening, and this was back in the spring. And he's like, man, Dad, I think I need to pull the trigger. And I'm yeah. really leaning towards Colorado. I'm like, man, why don't you play your senior season? And, and the more I talked to my buddies, you know, that had gone through it, they're like, yeah, you, if, you, if you know, you need to commit. Which was wild to think that we're committing before our senior year. You know, it's just, again, it's re- way different really, than what you and I experienced. So, yeah, I mean, I remember guys. So here we are. Yeah, I remember guys at the, you know, the, the last day before signing day, like they were making an announcement. <laughs> um, it, but, I mean, it is, it is different with social media, with the internet, with the huddle and, and all the stuff. I mean, these kids are playing. These guys, these guys are probably playing more football from the time they're 10 to 18 than I played Probably till my There's fifth no year, my fifth year in the NFL. There's no doubt, and and I don't know that that's a good thing to be honest with you, bro. Yeah. I'm just like I don't think that's a great thing. I think I a either. little of like childhood and innocence and all that stuff is a little lost because yep. you know these guys are they, they, they these people around them are getting into them early, and, and it's like yeah. man, you better make it to the NFL. You better. So there's a ton of pressure on them. You, why don't you have offers? Why don't you, you know, and, and it's pressure on the college coaches. They're offering kids. You know, I tell this to people all the time, it's hard enough in the NFL to pick a guy after you've watched him play four years of college and go, man, he's yeah. going to be a good pro quarterback. Well, I mean, and we're going to say that he's played an eighth grade year, a ninth grade year, and he's going to be a good college. Like, how do you yeah. know? You don't know. You, you have, and, you have and no so idea. It's, it's unfair to everybody. It's unfair to the college coaches, and it's unfair to the players. Um, and now, now you're putting in the NIL. So, you know, we had this kid in Texas. He goes up to Ohio State and, and foregoes his senior year of high school here in yeah. Texas. And, go, and yeah. he goes up there and, you know, and I root for him. You know, we, we met him at the Elite 11 stuff. We root for him. We hope he does well. But mm-hmm. in that scenario, you have all these people paying him now. Yeah. What if that doesn't work out? Oh, like, yeah. What if he's not good? Yeah. And what do those businesses do that have invested in him? Where does that leave them? And what well, does it, that do for the future of those those kids? You yeah. Know? So and it almost pressures scary to me. It almost pressures the school into playing that kid because the boosters and all the businesses that have paid him, and so they want to keep that they want to keep that relationship around. And if they're like, hey, like we just can't play the kid. He didn't he didn't pan out. It's like those people are like, well, we just wasted, you know, hundred thousand dollars or, or <laughs> no whatever doubt. it is. And the same thing as no an doubt. owner. Same good. thing as the owner in NFL. It's like, hey. You know, we just we just paid this guy eight million dollars. Like, why the hell isn't he on the field? No doubt, and I think, like, I I I was for some sort of reform in what was going on with the yeah. NCAA. Like, we needed we pay the players, or we needed something that made it better. Yeah, that a kid could 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 get his family on a flight to come watch him play if he needed. Sure. You know, if they need no, it. absolutely. But I think the other side of this coin is, th- is where we're at now, where, which is there's going to be businesses and people investing, boosters investing in these, in these kids, and they're not going to pan out. Yep. And this, head co- this coaching turnover, and, and, and that's just like the NFL. Well, you didn't make him good, so you must be a bad coach, so you're fired. Yeah. You know, and I don't think that's necessarily the right thinking. No. Um, back to your point. Like, when did the boys start playing football? So my guys, seventh grade. Like with pads. With pads, you know, not until seventh. We would throw it in the yard. Sure. But seventh grade with pads, and, and we were doing everything else. Soccer, baseball, basketball, everything that kind of works with hand-eye. Yeah. And our, 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 our situations are unique, obviously, mm-hmm. being a professional athlete. Like, I didn't want to push my kids into it because I didn't want them to feel pressure to do it. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, we would throw the ball around in the yard all the time. But sure. we never – it was really – so seventh grade, probably for Owen, we played football. Mm-hmm. And then maybe, and he played receiver. Yeah. He didn't play quarterback. Eighth grade, I don't think he played quarterback. And then eighth grade, he wanted to play quarterback. And so really kind of going into high school for him is when we really started working at quarterback. Yeah. And even then, treaded very lightly because I didn't want him to feel pressure. So it was sure. like, let's throw, let's, yeah. you know. So until there became a, okay, you have a skill to do this. Yep. Now, now we can work on this because yeah. – the last thing you want to do as a parent is go, hey, man, I, you know, like you're going to be a quarterback. Yeah. It's like, man, you might not have the skill to do that. So I, I wanted to wait and see if he had the wherewithal, both of them, to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they do, obviously. Um, and, <laughs> and then we went down that road. But 
but but it's a it's a delicate dance but but you know i, I look out there and some of these people put pads on these kids when they're in third, third fourth, fourth fifth grade. grade it's I know. ridiculous it's not what our game's about, and it's going to teach them bad habits. It is, and and they're only playing football from that from you know third fourth grade on. I was uh, I, I'm reading a book uh, called Range right now, and it it basically talks about um, I mean you know those outliers in the world. Tiger Woods is one. I mean you can you can find them out there, but it just talks right. about um, you know elite people in their fields have a lot more range in their life from you know sec or two years old to 18 years old. They, they really don't start specializing until they get past 18 in their 20s and, and putting, you know, the 10,000 hour rule. They don't really do that in their formative years, in, in their teens, in their, in, their, in their adolescence. They don't figure that out until later on. And that, and that range of, you know, doing other things, playing the piano, you know, playing soccer, w- art, whatever it is, all those different perspectives help them whenever they start to really specialize in, in whatever it is that they're going to do. No doubt about it. I mean, we talk about bandwidth all the time, like yeah. your ability to process information. Sure. And, you know, I'm trying to explain this to my kids. Hey, read a book, do this, do that. You know, yeah. it's like, why? Why can't yeah. I just do this thing? And it's yeah. like, because no different than when we train our bodies. Like yep. we don't go out and just do football movements. Yeah. We lift weights and do different things that are different movements to increase our, our physical ability to perform the task. And it's mm-hmm. the same thing mentally. Like if you don't have range, if you've not done a, a, a wide berth of things, yeah. then you're really p- pigeonholing yourself from a cognitive standpoint in that event to be able to get over things. To, to When a bad thing happens, how do I process that and get through it? Absolutely. If you have range, I think your ability to process that is better. If you don't have range, then you could be so focused. You may have put 10,000 more hours than the other person on that thing, but only being on that thing, you will have no ability to cognitively flex around those things when an obstacle happens. Absolutely. Totally and agree. So totally I'm agree. A 100% agreement. Like, let them play everything. Yep. Let them play everything. Put a ball in their hand, piano, like you're saying, stretch their minds. Uh, and it's going to make them better down the road. I totally agree. Camden's, Camden's all over me. Third grade, wants to play, wants to start pl- playing flag, wants to start, you know, they, they start, I think, sixth grade, tackle. Um, and I'm like, listen, dude, like, I didn't do it. You know, you're not going to do it. I know a lot of guys that, that, that didn't start this young. Like, you're, you're going to be fine. If you're good enough at, at some point, like, it all work out. But, like, you need to do a lot of different stuff and find out exactly – you, you might not. You, there might be something out there you like more than football. Um, you don't. You know. You just never know. That's right. And we were looking That's at. Right. Uh, we were looking at. I think you know. They look. They were looking at like twenty three of the last uh, first round quarterbacks, and I think twenty one of them played, and were really highly talented in another sport in high school. All oh, state. No all state. I mean, something. You know, basketball, baseball, something like they just. Very rarely, I think, does a guy get to elite level without dabbling in some other stuff yeah well because too we just like to compete i mean yes. at the end of the yeah. day like to go okay for just this five or six month window in high school mm-hmm. you're gonna play football mm-hmm. and only do that yeah i would go man like what were you doing the rest of the year I like, know. If, I, if i was taking a kid yeah. I'd be like, what were you doing the rest of the year yeah like, you like i couldn't do that i like, couldn't either i need something to compete at yeah and I'll go play basketball. I'll go play. So I would have signed up for something else yeah. to kind of get that fixed because that's the kind of guy you want running your huddle is a guy yeah. that wants to compete all the time, hyper competitive, looking for a challenge. You know. I remember whenever I was in high school, and I would, you know, we we were usually pretty good, so we'd go in the playoffs and go kind of go go far. And I remember after every every football season, I'm like, you know, I think I'm just gonna take a week off, you know, and then I'll go into basketball. And that first day would hit, and I'd be like. I'd walk out to the school parking lot. I'd kind of, they were practicing basketball at that point. I kept like, hey, you know, I'm just going to take a week, guys. I'll be, I'll be back, back out there. And I go out to the school parking lot and be like, what, what, what do I do now? Where do I, what do, I, yeah. what, do I, what do I do? So I'd go home that first day and the second day and be like, I guess I'm just going to start playing basketball. I got nothing else to do. So, I mean, it, it's just, <laughs> it's just how now. it was. You know, I just wanted to be out there yeah, and compete you, with you somebody. Have fuel. Like, you you got to feel the fire. You want to go compete for sure. Do you wish that you were better at ping pong so you would have beat me more? Like that was <laughs> that wasn't in your range. It wasn't in my. I don't know. I mean, I just think I picked it up late. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you think I, you think I'm you're talking that up too? Is just you think you're late, be, late you, to the party? You're a late bloomer in, in ping pong. Yeah, I mean, 
and I'm still like, you know, I need to get a table. You know, we'll play every now and then here. Sure. Um, but, uh, but I tell people all the time, like, that was one of the cool things about our time there in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, of, a lot of laughs and good times in that room and ping pong. But it was it was reflective of our team to watch like good players like we're talking about right now. Good players. Yeah. Brian Erlacher, yep. Lance Briggs, Devin Hester, Brandon Marshall, like good freaking players. Yeah. Roll around that table and compete at ping pong. Oh, yeah. And hate to lose. Hate and to lose. And then you wonder why the stretch that you were there, why y'all won so many games, you know? Yeah. We had some, yeah, I mean, we had some guys, some athletic guys, some absolute football players on, on the field that, you know, would compete at anything. Didn't care. At anything, yeah. Practice, ping no pong. Doubt. I mean, I mean, it was it, it it was fun, and whenever for everyone listening, whenever Josh got there, uh, Mike was there, right? March. Yeah. Mike March yeah. was there. Oh, yeah. Mike March was there, and uh, he tells me, "Hey, we're bringing in Josh McCown. and I don't know him, so I'm I'm figuring this stuff out. And then Josh comes in the room like he's been there for ten years. Shaking everyone's <laughs> hands, smiling. Hey, how can I help out? And like, this is Mike Sky, so I'm a little bit like taken back. Like, what? What's what's going on here? Like, why is this dude so nice and so helpful? And it, it took a minute, and then you know you realize, all right, he's this is who he is. Like, this is him to a core. <laughs> and I was like, but at first I was like, I don't really know about this guy right now. But that's who you were, yeah. and no, you did, and you did everything was, well, under the sun. Because half of it, I. I played with some of the, you know, some yeah. of those dudes. And then yep. it was, you know, um, I think I figured out, I had figured out to that point and even being out of the league and getting back in, it was just, it was just this kind of humbling experience of going, when I get back in, mm -hmm. I want to help a team as best I can. I think sure. I had kind of spent the first half of my career trying to just like, you know, claw my way to yeah. the top and be yeah. the starter. Yeah. And it, it's not that I wasn't helpful, but I was just like so focused on me. And I'd been out, spent time coaching high school football, and it was just like, man, you know, it'll be better for me if I just come into this thing. And you, and plus it was helpful that you were there. It was clear yeah. who the starter was. And I was like, it'd be better for me if I can just come in yeah. and help the team. Yes. I mean, I, I hate it whenever it's cover one, you look across the line, and then you're like not sure, like, do I have a guy that can win or not? And it's a sick feeling whenever you don't have a guy. Oh, it's, a, it's a, like – you're up there, you look right, 180, yep. look yep. left, 180, look back, right, open. It's like going <laughs> to the fridge when you don't have anything, you uh, open it again, you open it again, and you look in, you're like, like maybe pitch. that guy, turned, you know, he was six foot when I looked away, maybe he's six four, I look back over there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And it's like, no, nope, same guy. And, and, you know, for my part, I'm sure those, those cats were standing at the line going, man, I was counting there, but I tried to throw me the ball. So it probably works both ways. No. Uh, but, yeah, you got to have winners out there when you build your yeah. team, for yeah. sure. And you got to have talent. Um, but there's a way to do it and do it the right way. And sometimes it's pairing those talent with, with guys that can help get them to Sunday and make sure they're doing the right thing. Did the game slow down a lot for you as you got older? Or what, what was the biggest yeah, difference after sure. – after, I mean, you played forever. So, like, after year 10 – yeah, yeah, it, uh, for sure it slows down. I think, you know, I mean, you'll see it with Tom. Like, things still get you because defenses are good, yeah. you know, and uh, lesser and lesser things get you. But yeah. uh, you may be at the line of scrimmage with your mind in one place about a certain thing or check or whatever, and also just pressure that is like, you know, eight out of ten times I would get it, but because I was thinking about this other thing, I miss it this time. Uh, but I do think it slows down for sure. When you're at the line and you know, you know, you know the feeling when you're like, you, you can almost tell the defenders to rotate down, you know, who's yep. doing what. And, uh, and I think like I try to tell, you know, my boys that play quarterback and some of these younger guys that I've been around is <clears throat> like the way you know the play and, and what's going to happen before the snap, your mind can spin through that Rolodex of looks that you've experienced before and kind of land on a positive experience. And then you, quickly visualize it and you make that throw in your mind and then and you gravitate towards that and all of a sudden you drop back and you put it there and it's around the money and I think that happens more and more the older you get because you've had all these experiences and so you're able to grab in your mind very quickly I've seen this throw against this coverage and I know I can hit it yeah and, uh, and so I think the execution rate goes up because of that yeah and it becomes less really about you and you completing the throw I think it becomes more about the defenses and and seeing that part of it like 
the the physical part of it, I think, gets easier just because of the mental reps and you know the, you've done it so many times. So like that, that throw is easy. It's like just saying, "Hey, all right, what are you guys doing?" Comprehending that, and then once you get to you know once you get to this part, it's like, "All right, it's just muscle memory." For sure, I, I think that's that comes over time um, to where you're exactly right. Your 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 brain's on autopilot as far as the throw goes, and you're just. You're just fitting the pieces together on where the ball should go. Um, but I'll say this, and I think that's a little bit so it stumps young quarterbacks. I know I dealt with the change in offenses is yeah. you really never get that muscle memory, I think, when you're going through all seasons learning offenses and not, you know what I'm saying? Totally. But like if you go through three or four years of your career in the same offense, then in OTAs, you're not really worried about, like, what do we call this? You can actually go, man, I'm going to. I'm going to drop back and I'm going to feel this throw and I'm going to get the experience of this throw. And you do that several times. All of a sudden now you've hammered that into your, your, your toolbox of throws. Whereas if you're spending your off seasons going, man, like what do we call trips right this year? And yeah. What's, yeah. what's all go, what do we yeah. call it this year? And how yeah. side protections this year? You're not physically, I don't think you're getting better. And so for no. me, my, like mine was attrition. Like I, I probably experienced, you know, in years, 11, 12, 13, 14, what most guys experience in like year six, seven, and eight. Because oh, it's it just finally, I had hit enough systems over and over again that I finally overlapped. But um, but I think it's that's a, a thing we don't talk about enough is like young players being in the same system, allowing those guys to grow in that system and, and the way their, their mind's not on something else in the offseason. Yeah, I was always, I mean, after, once once I got towards the, the end of my career, I was always jealous of the guys that were in the same system, and, and you just don't have, have to think. I mean, you, you just go out there year eight, and it's like, I mean, you know exactly what's coming through the headset. I mean, you, you can stop them before they even get to, you know, it's trips right, to, and you can just stop them and be like, I got it. I, I know exactly what we're about to yeah. say. And, and, and much to your point, I think that you look at a lot of these young quarterbacks and the successful ones are going to be the ones that are in the same system and, and that do have that, that carry over year in and year out. And, and I think that that's missed a lot in the NFL. And there's some good GMs out there that I, I think are now starting to figure that part out. For sure. I mean, but some of my favorite things to my little brother talk about how he would watch the dynamic between Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Oh, gosh. And they're Incredible. sitting there going, hey, do you remember six ago when we ran – you know, this jerk route on the on the plus thirty going in with with this guy and, and Colson did this and yep. hey let's do that this week yeah you know and it's just it gives me chills man it's fascinating because it's just a cool part of our business that a lot of people don't get to experience yeah. and and my little brother really he, he enjoyed listening to how Drew and Sean worked and I think like you said I think that's the goal of every team is their head coach and a quarterback together together for a long time. Um, but it's hard because we're like we mentioned earlier, we're in such a microwave society where if you don't capture that success in the first two or three years, it's one of them's got to go, either the quarterback or the coach, or sometimes yeah. both. And uh, and you know, it, it's unfortunate because sometimes I believe you're you're like a year away from maybe getting over that hump, yeah. And the move is already made. So yeah. um, hopefully, with some of these young guns coming in, they'll they'll be patient with them. They'll they'll pair them up with the right guys and let them grow together. Yeah, if you can if you can keep a group together, and I mean, obviously, it takes getting the right group together, the right quarterback, right OC. I mean, all the pieces. You know, I mean, you can you start playing chess out there. You know, it's a matchup game, and, and you're you're at a, a completely different level, and that and that's when it when it gets really fun. And my, my third year in Denver, yeah. I mean, it was like that. I mean, we were we were playing chess. I mean, we were we were mat we knew exactly what we were looking for on each play. We knew our matchup problems. We knew our matchup. Uh, uh, what, what we liked in our matchups too. So that's, uh, you know, I've, I've always been envious of guys that got to that point, you know, year five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, and above. It's, it's fun to watch. So who do you, who do you, who do you, who, which, which one of the young guys do you like? Out of this draft class this year, I really liked the, the BYU kid, Wilson. Yeah. I went to the Jets. Yeah. I, was, um, I, was, I, was, I, I got a chance to spend some time with him on the phone. I was impressed with him as a really? person. Um, yeah. Seems like a sharp kid. Uh, I mean, I think this is a Justin Fields. I really, I physically like everything about him. I, I'm always concerned with the Ohio State guys because yeah. I think Ryan Day is such a good coach yep. that guys are wide open all the time and they yep. manufacture great offense. Yep. And then there's this concern of does it translate to the league as yep. far as the quarterback's ability to process. Yep. Totally the early that. Are, he's going to be just fine. But it, yeah. but physically, he's a 
he's a big, strong dude that can run and move. Um, I like Lawrence, and I, and I like, I mean, I like all these guys. I like Mac Jones. I think all of them are unique in this class is they all have different things that they do well and uh, and different traits. But um, but the way Wilson throws the ball to me, you know, if I was going to try to bet on one of them, it would probably yeah. be him to say yeah. he's going he's gonna to live up to it. Yeah, and and I like there. I like uh, you know Joe D's there, who you know is a GM, and then Rex is mm-hmm. there. Is a, I don't know what exact assistant GM or whatever his title is. <laughs> which, who knows what his title is? But I mean, we've known all around that, studs. Yeah, all around, all around badass. So we know we know what they're doing there and how they're going to manage mm-hmm. it and stuff. So I mean, I, I think that kid has, is kind of set up for success. Obviously. A lot has to play out, but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's definitely and in Chicago. Yeah. It, I mean, what you know that organization as well as I do too. So it just depends on what they do. If they blow it up after this year, if they get a little bit of success, if they let it ride out, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean that that's the case in point of just what we're talking about. Like, okay, at some point does this kid take over, and then yeah, is he making strides? And, and maybe you finish 500 or, or whatever you finish. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what seven. you finish. It doesn't matter what you finish. I mean, if he's making strides, I mean, yeah. you might be losing ball games, but if he's getting better and better and I'm, then, I mean, you got a decision to make. Then, 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 yeah. Then you have a hard decision to make and it goes back to what we're talking about. Now are you, are you all of a sudden going to change the offense? Yeah. Where this kid just spent a half a season or 10 games or 12 games playing yeah. with this terminology that he could carry into the off season with him and master you know, I just, I don't know. And, and and don't get me wrong, there's a certain, you know, aptitude that you want to see from your offense where you go, okay, we're going to keep these guys because what we're seeing is a trend that he's getting better. If you don't feel confident in the coaches, then you need to make a, a change because you feel like you can get somebody in there that's better. And that's certainly warranted. But, you know, that, that'll that be an interesting case. I, I, I worry about uh, Lawrence in Jacksonville. And so just, do I. I don't know. There's just, it just seems like. Yeah. There's a lot of chatter out of there, man, and I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be a good situation. Um, and I haven't, I haven't really talked to many people around there. I like his skill set. Yeah, uh, a little long for me. From, yeah, yeah, you know, from a yeah throwing standpoint. Yeah, I think he makes up for it with his velocity, but it, you know, it always concerns you with tight pockets. Like, yep. can he can he can he do all that in a tight pocket and yeah. still be accurate? And I've I've so, you know we, we've talked about it before almost almost having that short step no step and on the front and like. It seems like he's a little bit longer, so it takes a little bit. It take, I mean, it just takes long. I mean, especially, you know, you get six five, six six guys. It's just the levers are so much longer. It's just it's just a different animal. Yeah, just, I mean, just physics, yeah physics. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, and, a, that's always a concern. And it seems, can you and, go from a phone booth? Yeah, and it seems like their talent level is probably lower than, you know, some of these other guys we've talked about. Uh, right. So it, it's just one of those things. We'll see what happens. It should be fun, though. All right. What? What are you? Are you I mean, are you? I mean, are we going after a head coaching job? Are we GMing it? Like, what are? <laughs> what? Are, I'm just trying to ride your coattails. Like, I just want to slide in yeah. and just yeah. watch from watch from this. Come give me on. like, yeah, give, me, give, me a, days, give me a give me a corner booth. Maybe one of these days. Is this one of these yeah. things like after the kids oh. kid after the boys are gone or or what? What's the thing? Yeah, I think so. You know. It was never in my mind to do that. Yeah. And then I got to Chicago yeah. with you guys. Yeah. And Chris Ballard was there. Yep. He just texted Chris Ballard's him. pulling me aside. He's awesome. He, he's, he's saying, hey. Yeah, he's crushing it in Indy right now. He's crushing it. He's the yeah. best. And he's yep. pulling me aside and he said, hey, man, you ever consider coaching? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, you know, hours, just the whole thing. I just, I was jaded by, you know, sure. by the, the, the whole thing. Having bounced around, I was like, no, no, maybe high school, but not, not in a league. And he goes, you really need to rethink that. Rob Marinelli's on that staff. Start saying the same thing. Lovey Smith start saying the same thing. Yeah. I, and I start going throughout my career, and these these different coaches, older guys, pouring into me, going, you really need to think about getting into this thing. Absolutely. And so, you know, it wasn't even in my thought process, and then it became later in my career. And so then these last four or five years of my career going into these buildings and taking notes and, and watching and learning and, and understanding, you know, organizational processes from that standpoint, not just as a player, but just like, what, how, do I like our schedule today? Like yeah. how we do things today? Yeah, there's What's some... that process like? Yep. Like all of those things and making notes on those things and trying to, trying to you know, 
for maybe in case this thing happens one day down the road. So, so, so the short, the, the short, the short answer is yes. Short answer is yes. Like maybe <laughs> one day. Um, yeah. There's been some thought put into it. It won't be like, hey man, I, let's go yeah. talk to a coach today. Yeah. Uh, so you know, went through the process with Houston um, towards the end of the season, and it was you know it was a lot, there was a lot made of it. It wasn't as much of a you know an interview I think as it was just checking in organizationally on. You know, as an older player, on my opinion of things, we talked about coaching certainly, and sure, and uh, and you know, it was a, it was a it was a good experience for me, um, but it just wasn't time right now um, for for where I'm at, and you know, with my family. So, oh yeah, uh, maybe oh, yeah. one of these days we'll see. Oh, well, you'd as crush as, it as long as as, long as, as, long as colors involved. As I'll, long as uh... colors involved. <laughs> Some way, shape, or form. Man. I, I'd help out you know? any way, any way you want me to. Um, well, you 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 got to you know we talk about uh, range now. I mean, yeah, you could, you could come as a team chef and bring the cuts, or you could be a part <laughs> of the team media now and do the podcast, or you could hell you could pick the damn players. You know what I mean? You could just be the GM. So you got you got range. You know, you I know, you short it. step, no step. You could coach the freaking quarterbacks. You know, so. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, we're all over the map. Um, I mean, you are a grandfather now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How it's is wild, bro? Every like I don't. Every time I think about, it, I'm like, whoa! And that's, I get new pictures every day, and yeah. it's just surreal. That's awesome. But that's right. Yeah. How, how are they doing? Yeah, they're there at Tennessee. Yeah, they met at the University of Tennessee, and uh-huh. uh, he's still he's still there playing, finishing yep. up his. He's got two years left of ball. Yeah. But uh, yeah, bro, it's a whole new world. It's wild. What's uh, it's fun? Because you just give them back. Yeah, they're not yours. Yeah, it's like you get the good part. Like yeah. you hang out and then give them back. Give some presents, so, hang out, so and then like, hey, um, what what's your name gonna be? I mean, uh, Grandpa. All right, bro. I mean, so I already have it. I, I already okay. have it. I did not pick it. Okay. Okay. Caveat here. But it's Big Papa. Big Papa. I love it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> who who Mama picked Nat, it? Mama Nat and Big Papa. Oh, Mama Nat. Mama Nat. Yeah, Nat, Mama Nat, Nat and Big Papa. So Mom, that's us. Nat's uh, his wife. She's fabulous. How's she doing? She's doing great. Yeah. She's doing great. She's adjusting to country living, but crushing it. Oh, she'll she, spend a couple hours on the week on the skag, mowing the yard. She's, is she? She's adjusting well. Oh, yeah. But she's a badass, man. Oh, I know. Yeah, she's she's the sure. best. She's the best. You have, to, you have to tell her I said hello. I'll do it. Well, man, I appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. Let me Enjoy know if it. I let me know if I can do anything going forward. Pump up your uh, your head coach or GM media blitz. Media blitz or the cuts, man. I just might need a good state. I appreciate it. All right, Josh McCown. Thanks, buddy. All right, brother. See ya. Thanks for having me, bro. All right. Okay, that is it for episode three, Josh McCown. Um, a little more football talk this week, which is fun. Um, I enjoy it. I hope you did, you enjoyed it. Josh is an unbelievable person. You can tell he's got a, a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, awesome family guy, uh, intelligent as as they come, and, and it's going to be going to have a future somewhere in the NFL. Not sure where it's going to be yet, but wherever he goes, he's going to have an unbelievable impact. I'm, I'm excited to watch him. And his sons are, are going to be playing college football here here soon enough. So a lot to watch on the Josh McCown front. Uh, if you got anything, uh, social media, Jay has tweets on Twitter. Jay has Instagram on Instagram. Uh, look for clips, videos from this week's show. And we're going to keep uh, rolling along here. It seems to be going well. Uh, if you got any, uh, like I said, if you got anything we need to change or any guests that you're really dying to uh, have on, let us know. Other than that, uh, it's a wrap. Week three. Thank you.